Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I just want to talk to you, open up. This is definitely very different than anything I believe I've done on my channel. Uh, to be honest, I don't know exactly what to call this, if this is a one standalone video or if this will ever turn into more of a series. I guess you guys will let me know. Um, as you guys know, most of my videos are centered around hair. I am a hairdresser. Um, I studied cosmetology and I've always shared with you guys um, tips and information that I know. I absolutely love hair. Um, it is definitely one of my biggest passions and I've shared that information with you guys. But along with the study of cosmetology, um, which is what hair is a part of, Cosmetology isn't just hair, it is the study of skin, it is the study of nails, it is the study of basically how to beautify oneself um, in, in a way to enhance what you already have. So it's looking at the whole picture. I've, and trust me, I've, I've thought about this a lot, I just, I didn't know how to kind of stream on into this category, but I, as we all know, one of the main parts of beauty uh, is confidence. And I think that that is definitely something I have not touched enough on. And really like inner confidence, not this confidence that we like see on TV that almost seems fake. And it's often confidence, I feel like the confidence we see is extreme extroverts. And that doesn't mean that they are necessarily confident, it's more just their personality. And someone who, say, is more of an introvert like myself um, will seem less confident. Um, basically what I want to do is kind of just sit here and be really real with you guys and sort of explain kind of my journey. So I grew up without sisters. I don't have sisters. I only have two younger brothers. And I feel like growing up, I used to always think like, I wish I had a sister that I can ask questions to that could either guide me or I can help guide her. Um, they were just, obviously I'm really close with my mom. My mom's definitely one of the strongest female role models that I have and I am so fortunate to have that. But I think having someone like your age to be able to talk to is also really important. And as a child, I was actually very talkative and very outgoing and I always had a ton of friends. Uh, but it was definitely more into like my teenage years where I became more of an introvert and and I felt like it was a little bit more difficult to either open up to friends um, and not just open up, but then to really talk about things that were truly important to me. And I think that's where I really wish that I had had a sister um, which I always thought would be like a built-in like best friend. <laughs> you know, she would just live with you and you could always chat about stuff. And so one of the things with my channel is that I have always wanted to give you guys what I guess I wish I had um, when I was younger. Uh, when I was younger, obviously there was no YouTube. Um, I would literally, I'm, I'm so gonna date myself, I'm gonna sound like I am literally 103 years old, but I would go to the library and check out books that had to do with cosmetology, how to get into the industry, um, how to contour before like contour was really a big thing. And um, I know that that just sounds so ancient right now, but that's like, especially in high school, like before I like went into cosmetology school and when I just really, like I knew that I had this like big interest and it was like the only medium or media that I felt like I could find information on was in books. And so now that we have this absolutely amazing platform, which is YouTube and just social media in general, um, I have noticed that I haven't been using my platform um, definitely to its fullest potential. I know I haven't and I know that and I promise to be vulnerable and really open in this video but I have to admit that I've always hidden behind hair facts on my channel um, and by hiding behind them meaning that when I explain to you all of my knowledge and I state a fact that is not arguable. So um, when I say, you know, like lifting a level five to a level seven, that's two levels, the pH has to be, the, like that's science, like no one can argue that with me. And 
Um, so I feel like I've always kept my channel to be something that is uh, very fact oriented and almost very like rigid, not like a friendship. And um, I feel like the audience that I have built and created, um, which you guys are all amazing. I do have to say anytime I meet one of you guys on the street, um, anytime one of you guys books an appointment and sits in my chair, you guys are just all so wonderful. And of course I want to take just a second to thank you guys for being as absolutely amazing as you are. And I truly do feel like I do have the best subscribers. Um, but I feel like I have really built that, like I said, on facts. And um, I, I think, and I've always felt like I wanna open up more to my subscribers, but I am just a private person in general. Um, I have a very small group of friends that's how I feel comfortable. That's, I, I love having a very, you know, close, small group, small group, <laughs> having a very small group of friends that I can totally 100% trust and be myself. And I know that that isn't as easy to do online. Um, but I think with, um, being, you know, at a little over half a million subscribers, what I have personally learned is that the bigger that number of subscribers gets, the bigger your haters get too. And um, I do have to say that in the beginning it was actually quite easy because everyone's really nice and everyone's really encouraging. And at first I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, I thought this was gonna be a lot harder. People are actually like really nice. And of course, then you start growing and um, you, you end up getting a lot more of that hate that you hear everyone else having as well. And another thing too, and as you know, I work closely with Adam. Adam manages my whole YouTube channel and um, he is in advertising and he also does photography and film and all that stuff. So he basically sets up lights when you guys give me props on the lighting and the camera work and the editing. That is definitely thanks to him. So you guys can leave him a comment and thank him for that. Um, but he is in, marketing and advertising and he definitely looks at numbers and he oftentimes says like why haven't you grown more you know like you work so hard and we work so hard together like and I think one of the things is I think I've been holding myself back and I think I and I will tell you why the same way I am with my friends I want to accumulate subscribers the exact same way I want to accumulate subscribers that truly like me, that can stand me. And um, I can talk about really controversial things and I can definitely air out my dirty laundry and you know, just be really open and in bubbly and all this, I know those things get views, um, but that is just not who I am. And I swear when I say this, that I would rather never reach a million subscribers but the subscribers I have are like true, you know, like friends, like true family members. And I don't wanna have someone to click that subscribe button and they're just clicking because they don't like me. And um, at the end of the day, I get paid either way, whether you like me or not. <laughs> so, and if I were doing this for money, I wouldn't care. But the truth is, is that I do care. I. I care about my subscribers. When my subscribers leave me messages, sometimes that are so personal, um, sometimes just full of pain, um, I have to be honest with you guys that sometimes it pains me for days. Sometimes it's hard for me to fall asleep because of a story that you know I've read in my comments. So I am a very sensitive person, um, both emotionally and just physically. I was actually diagnosed as an HSP and that stands for highly sensitive person, which at first when she told me, I was like, uh, well, I didn't need to come to therapy to have someone tell me that. But it is a clinical thing and the way she described it is that it basically means that the, say the average person is born with five sensors. Sensors for what's going on around them, sensors for what, how people are acting, what people are saying and what they actually mean. Um, so the average person is born with about five of those sensors. I was born with about 75. So that just means that I absorb everything that's around me from energies, 
to whether someone likes me or not. I can pick that up from a mile away. Um, and down to physical kind of um, sensitivities, meaning that I feel everything. So basically I will have three to four meltdowns a week and think that I'm dying because I can feel a weird symptom in my body. And growing up with that, that was really scary because as a child, constantly thinking that you're gonna die because of something is obviously not fun. So I think that has a lot to do with, I think my sensitivity to being online. <laughs> and so I, I think every time I think about this, my, my go-to answer to myself is always, why put yourself out there? You are just going to hurt yourself more. And you know, so just kind of hide back and only state facts, which is what I've been doing basically. And obviously that just kind of keeps me going. But one of the main reasons that I think really, really has stuck to me for the last couple of weeks, and again, part of being highly sensitive, uh, the effects of something that probably would affect someone for a couple of minutes will affect me weeks. But, and that is the sudden loss of um, Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade. Having those also happen both in the same week, that's just so been heavy on my heart. And no, I don't know either of them. I know they're celebrities and just because they're celebrities, I know they're not more important than an average person. And I know that unfortunately this happens on a daily basis. And that just, it like cripples me with pain because um, I deal with a lot of anxiety, as I've mentioned here and there in, in my videos. Um, I've also said that I haven't dealt with like crazy depression, but it definitely, I feel like I will have like a day or two where I'm like definitely more down, but I can normally get myself out of it, which also sounds silly because when you are clinically depressed, it's not like you can just get yourself out of it. but. I don't know if I've just been good at dealing with it or if maybe my depression slash anxiety isn't as bad as maybe someone else's. Um, I don't know. But what I do have to say is that in these last couple of weeks since those sudden losses, um, it has been really difficult for me because, and it was like with the comment of with a lot of people's comments saying like, they're rich, they have money, they like could have gotten help, they have everything they could possibly have, like, like they think they have problems. And I actually heard um, an interview talking about this and it was a specialist and they the way they described it was for someone to actually take their life, um, it means that they have to be in such agonizing pain and imagine like actual physical pain. Like if you were in such agonizing pain that there was no medicine, no anything that could help you um, and you've been dealing with it for weeks. I mean, could you go on? And that's how they described depression. And I, I think, I mean, it, it's sad anytime you hear a story like this, but I do have to say that Kate Spade spoke more to me and I feel like everyone talked more about Anthony Bourdain's passing and probably because he was more famous and not more famous as like a presence but like you felt like you knew him there was shows about him like a lot of people you know associated with him the fact that he had this passion for food which is a passion that I think most people share um people felt like they knew him more but I feel like for Kate Spade, the fact that she had a teenage daughter, all I could think was, oh my gosh, like the most impressionable years of someone's life um, to lose a parent. And like that really like, ah, oh, like I, I don't even know what her daughter looks like. I mean, obviously like I don't, I don't know her, didn't know her um, nor her daughter, but um, just for a family member to think that like, they had a family member that was in such pain that being away was the best option. Like that just, I mean, it breaks my heart. This I think should show you how, um, for me to have this reaction to something that has happened to someone that I don't know, and this was weeks ago, um, this is how I feel. <laughs> okay. Yes, this is when, 
And I have made videos in the past about my anxiety and the last time I did, I, I was overwhelmed at the um, amazing comments and messages that were left to me and um, and I had a message that I actually don't remember her name but her story was just um, she was severely ill she had lost um, both parents when she was very young and um, she had gone through a terrible terrible divorce and it was just like oh my gosh here I am like complaining about anxiety when this like poor woman you know and and it weighed on my heart and I was like okay instead of feeling you know bad because I, I, I can't help her um you know I mean of course I wrote back and I was like if there's anything I can do you know obviously let me know but my point was from that video the connection I felt with you guys just makes everything worthwhile again um from the negative comments to um just the hate that I get on almost a daily basis now, um, it just makes it all worth it. And I, I think my goal and my, not my goal, but my, a point or promise that I made to myself in the beginning was when I started YouTube was even if say five people are upset or don't like me or don't like the information that I'm giving, if I help one person, it's already worth it. And so I always try and think that in every video. So sometimes I'm like, is this an exciting video? Is this enough information? And I always think, sometimes like I'll make a video and I think, you know, this isn't going to reach a mass audience. This is so niche, but I'm like, but I'm sure there's like one person out there that needs to know this. I'm sure there's one person that is so gonna benefit from this skill or this bit of information. And that's honestly what I've stuck with. But my point is I know that I attract people like me and I know that a lot of people already follow me because they also suffer from anxiety. And the every time that I do get stopped on the street from a subscriber just wanting to say hello, um, one of the first things they always say is you saved my hair or I have anxiety too and your video opening up about it has made such a difference because I showed it to my husband or my best friend and now they understand it a little bit better. And unfortunately sometimes our family and our friends do need an outside source explaining what you're feeling to really understand it because it's like you're not making this up, There, this is a thing. Other people that don't know you feel the exact same way. And there's something so, so comforting in, which deep down I feel guilty about this, but knowing that someone feels the way I do when I feel awful, it, it, it's human nature. It makes us come together and it makes us feel good that someone else is going through the same pain. And, and I hate to admit that, but it, it is a human thing. And so, like I said, I've been wanting to talk about this. This has definitely been heavy on me for a while. But um, I believe it was two videos ago when I uploaded my vlog video of all like my work trips. And honestly, the week that I was editing that, it was probably like one of the worst weeks I've probably had in maybe 10 years. And I just mean emotionally, like nothing really happened that week any different than other weeks. But I was just not in a good emotional place. And as I was editing this video, um, I actually didn't think much of it editing. I just remember thinking like, I just don't feel good this week. And when I uploaded that video, um, cause honestly, I have, I honestly don't know anymore. Like I feel like there's some time that I'm like, this is such a good video. This has such good information and it will just get so much hate. And I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone missed the point. Like they'll, they'll say this was a sponsored video when oftentimes it's not or, um, you know, you weren't looking at the camera, or the lighting is off, or your hair looks damaged, like, I can't take advice from you, your hair looks awful, or things like that, and I'm like, really? That's what you guys got from the video? Um, and other times I'm like, you know what, this video is just, it's gonna be what it is, and, and sometimes it's just been like, I've been getting a lot of requests for this video, um, I'm not 100% happy with this video, but you know what, like, I'm uploading it, and then it gets you know, amazing feedback and people are like, I want more videos like this. So 
sometimes I feel like, do I not know what I'm doing? Do I not know what my audience wants? And sometimes I don't know if it's these are my true subscribers or if this is just like a handful of new people that just found me that day and then are requesting new things. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. But so my point is when I uploaded this vlog video, a lot of the comments were, oh my gosh, you have like the most perfect life. Um, I want your life or um, like, do you know how lucky you are? And you know, just stuff like that. Things that I think when I watch either celebrities or other YouTubers and I think, wow, they're just, they're so successful and they're always doing amazing things. And it's funny because I've never thought that someone could think that of me. And I feel after those comments, when I rewatched the video, I was like, oh my God, like this does from the outside, if you don't know about anything else, it does seem like I just have this glamorous traveling life. And the truth behind that was that the week, I mean, maybe the time I was experiencing those things, I was okay. Um, but the week I was editing that, I felt miserable. And um, the point is that it's so easy for us to see an edited chunk of footage and to think, you know, so highly. And I, I, it's not to say that you shouldn't think highly of someone that you admire, but um, to think that their life is perfect, I just, just I, I think the moral of this story is that my life is not, it's definitely not perfect. Um, I've also had clients that come in to the salon that, you know, have watched my videos and they say, oh my gosh, your, your condo just looks immaculate. It's like anytime, you know, in a vlog, like you, it just looks so clean. It just seems like everything's just put away. And the truth is that is so not the case. Um, we have a dog, um, both Adam and I are so busy. And so many times, like I'll just look at one room and be like, I don't have time. Like I'm just going to close that door. But the truth is, my house is messy <laughs> a lot of times. Um, I am unhappy and um, I think a lot of times too when I travel with Adam, Adam helps a lot with, you know, my, my YouTube stuff. Um, he shoots a lot of my videos. But the truth of the matter is, we fight a lot. <laughs> we fight about, I think the lighting should be brighter. I think it should be different angles. I think, and then it's hurtful to him because hey, he's working his ass off to, you know, to build a platform for me to, you know, to, to further my career. And so the point is that, and I know that this has been so, this message has been basically reiterated on social media a lot. I know I'm not the first person to come out with this, but what you see on social media is what we've edited down. I'm not going to edit a fight Adam and I had, you know, and put it up on social media. Um, I'm not going to film the day that I'm like miserable and can't get out of bed. Um, you know, you're seeing the highlights and you're seeing the best parts of my life and like other YouTubers. Um, but I do think that it is important to be transparent. Um, I, I do know that I have young subscribers and I, I don't know what it's like to, to grow up with social media this impactful as it is right now. To be 15 right now and be, you know, so persuaded and pushed by the media and, um, so yeah, I don't know what that's like. So I, I just, I, <laughs> what am I saying? I, I just want to come off as a lot more genuine. I absolutely love that there is a platform where you can share your information. I absolutely love the relationship that I feel that I have with you guys when it truly, on certain videos, I really do feel like I connect with you. As right now, as I'm speaking to you, I do feel I can envision, you know, the, my subscribers that, comment on every video, that like every video, that like every one of my photos on Instagram. I envision all of you guys and um, that to me is so special and so therapeutical. So therapeutical? So therapeutic to even sit here and to feel like I am talking to you guys. Um, so to say that I don't enjoy YouTube, I absolutely adore it and um, I, I want to use it to its fullest capacity and 
with the start of this video, I know that this is just a lot of talking, but um, I, I do want to get more into how to build self-confidence, um, how to, to really come into your own. And not in any way do I have it all figured out, um, but I feel like maybe I might be older than some of my subscribers. I know I have subscribers definitely older than me as well, um, but I, I think it would just be a great like girl talk, like where we could just sit down, talk about different topics. Um, this is kind of just an opener, but um, I also feel like in high school, I was always the girl that my friends would come to for advice. I just think that sometimes it's easier to kind of step back, kind of look at the big picture and kind of help someone out. So that's really what I want these videos to be about. And um, I don't want it just me talking to you. I, I would love it if you guys shot out um, video ideas, topics that we can talk about and we can start, you know, a conversation in the comments. So instead of creating a profile, <laughs> you know, on a negative site to talk shit about someone, why don't we talk about our problems here? And um, it could be a topic that's, you know, important to you. Um, I don't know, like suicide or weight issues or whatever it may be that like bothers you. If you want me to talk about it, we can talk about it and then people share their stories and you guys can kind of almost like meet each other. And I think that, um, I, I know that there's a lot more that can be done with this platform, but I feel like for right now, that is definitely one way that I would like to start or kickstart this idea. Um, um, I, I don't think that this type of video would necessarily be my main Saturday videos, but I'm thinking about maybe like in the middle of the week, maybe like on a Wednesday, um, and just uploading this type of video. Um, and it could just be a place where we come and we connect. And um, for those of you that maybe don't have someone that you can talk to, um, just knowing that someone out there is, you know, going through the same thing you're going through is just feels so great. Um, so before I leave you guys, I know that this is a lot of talking and I appreciate all of you guys that are still here. If you are, please leave me a black heart emoji to know that you guys have made it to the end. Um, I love knowing who of you are, you know, stick around. And so just before I leave you guys on this video, um, since I guess suicide and so hard to even just say that word out loud, but um, since that was the topic in this video and depression and anxiety and all of those things, um, something that has helped me in the last couple of weeks, um, and, and I have to thank Pete Davidson for this. Um, yes, he is the comedian who is dating and engaged to Ariana Grande. I know that there are very mixed opinions on this relationship. Um, I personally think that Pete Davidson is an amazing human being. Um, I'm not going to state the reasons why in this video, uh, but I've since I found out about him, I've been a huge fan, and I actually saw him and Ariana Grande in LA a couple weeks ago when I was there, and I actually think that they look insanely happy together, and I think they, they're a fabulous couple. I know that's just my opinion, but anyway, Pete Davidson is someone I definitely look up to, even though he is younger than I am. Um, he is so open and so raw about his um, mental illnesses, and I think that's one of the main reasons why I give him so much props. He is so real. And anyway, in an interview of him I heard um, a while back, he talked about his love for Kid Cudi, and I knew I'd heard of the the band, the musician, I mean, and I was just like, I, I guess the stuff is okay, but I never really like listened to it. And the album, Man on the Moon, is that the album's name? I believe so. Um, he's talked about how that album saved his life. And when I looked it up on YouTube, all these like comments was like, of like young people just saying that this song saved my life or this album saved my life. and. 
I was like, okay, now I'm really curious. Like, what does this music actually sound like? The first two songs I heard, I was like, I just bawled my eyes out. And, and I, again, it's because they were being so real and so raw. And it was exactly how I was feeling. So if anyone going through anything of what I talked about in this video and um, you guys just want to relate to someone, um, I, I would highly recommend checking out that album. Whether or not it is your style or type of music, at first I was like, what if it's not, it's probably not my taste in music, but it's definitely very different, but um, amazing to say the least. So anyway, um, thank you guys for listening, for those of you that are still here. Uh, I absolutely love and admire each and every one of you guys, and um, uh, please leave me a note down below what you think about this. Um, if you think just one or two of these a year is good enough, if you want this to be more of a regular um, thing, and if you do, let me know which topics you guys um, are interested in us talking about. So, um, so go ahead and click that red subscribe button if you haven't yet. Um, it helps me understand which videos you guys prefer me to make. Um, and it helps build our family. But obviously, only if you truly want to be here, of course. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video.